Hello everyone, and welcome to a video that I am making in probably one of the most boring weeks on the Japanese side in at least a while. Anyway, there's not too much going on this week. Uh, the event is really slow, and actually the drop rate of bonus unit or bonus enemies has been really bad for me, so I'm feeling a little bit uh, kind of bored with the game, uh, particularly because it's also a slow week in Arena, what with no wins, so I can't use my Lunara. Z I thought I wanted to talk about something, because there's two certainties on the Japanese side every time we get a new event or new players. One, someone will come in asking, why can't I see the banner? To which the answer is, you haven't set your time to the Japanese time, so you can't see the banner. And the other thing is, is we seem to always get somebody talking about ratings and unit ratings and unit ratings in general. And if you've ever been on, oh, I don't know, let's just take this one website. Let's take this one, for instance. Now, the Reddit community is a pretty damn great source of information for anyone who wants to play the Japanese or the global sides and because there's so much in the way of translation and units and stats and everything. And honestly, I absolutely love the Reddit side. But if you're scrolling down on the page, you may come across something that says a link. Yes, there it is. Under resources. And this is where a lot of people tend to to go and look and hey you have these two sites that are pretty good for in Japanese information if you use Google Translate. But you also tend to see numbers by units. Now, and a lot of people tend to look at these and take these as either fact or as some written guideline of what these units are like. And for the most experienced players, we know that these numbers are total garbage. Yes, I'm going to talk a little bit about this today, about Famitsu and Altima rating systems, their number systems, what units are rated high, what units are rated low, and why they're just generally bad, and generally bad, I think, for the game and for players. It goes a lot further beyond. So if you come down on the main page of Altima, you'll see all of these great units with numbers beside them. 98 for Lorne, 97 for Mercenary Ramza, 97 for Beatrix, are you kidding me? And in the past, I actually looked to these numbers quite a lot because, uh, you know, when you're even in video games, we tend to look at primarily at a number score because it is a quick validation of whether the game is either good or bad without actually researching too much more into it. And that's a little bit of a problem for a couple of reasons. So let's take one of my favorite units, Lunera, 95? Well, I think she's better than that. Let's actually go see why. And you're giving all of this a mass amount of information. You can translate and read it. But here's what it ultimately comes down to, is how these units are actually graded. You notice 39 people have said that she is a 100 out of 100 unit where three people have said she's a 10 out of 100. Now, there are a lot of things to read into here, and at surface level, what you really need to know is that it really doesn't mean what it means, these numbers. These numbers are rated on by people, and there is no way in hell that Lunera is a 10 out of 100. And what are some of these reasons that we see these harsh ratings? Well, could be people not getting it, uh, people not being able to awaken it to seven stars, uh, people not understanding the mechanics of their moves, or what are their strengths or weaknesses. And yeah, I can understand that. For one thing, 
it's a gotcha game. Uh, units are not the units that we want all the time. Uh, sometimes we get lucky, sometimes we pull hard on a banner, sometimes we wail when there's a unit we want. Particularly for me recently it was Renoa, and I'm not interested in anyone telling me Renoa's bad. First of all, my Renoa is actually quite good. I put a lot of work into her. But we're not interested in hearing our, the units we like, whether for personal reasons or because they're strong, are actually rated badly. Taking another random example, well, let's take a look at Lauren. Lauren, we can pretty much take a look at everything that she has gotten at, in her 7-star kit, and we know that she is amazing. She is a fantastic 7-star Awakened unit. But we scroll down, <clears throat> here there are 9 people that have rated her a 10, 61 people have rated her a 100. Now how much you want to bet that maybe some of this extra hatred has come from the fact that she was a unit that could only be gotten on the Japanese side via actual EX point and spending money, and this is a premium unit essentially. Well, technically they're all premium units if you spend hell. My Renault is pretty damn premium in my collection. It's the one time I've actually gone out of my way and spent a fair amount of money just to make sure I got the unit I wanted and could get her fully awakened. So the, herein lies a problem with the rating systems, at least on Altima, is the fact that they are user generated. They are about as useful as looking on a, I don't know, something like a Metacritic to see what you think of the game and only basing it on the user scores. First of all, you have no idea most of the time who these users are. In Altima, we can't even look. And it's kind of a problem when you don't know who these people are, or what their backgrounds are, or what their reasons are for even voting these numbers. It's in general, I think, bad form. I think it devaluates units. I think uh, it. I think it's generally bad for the game. And I want to comment a little bit more about this. It feels bad in this game to do a gotcha and then find out you get Delita. It felt bad for a while to get Queen and then find out, and all of a sudden we found out that Queen 7 Star was one of the best kits out there and her Super TMR is uh, fantastic and amazing and I want to do a video about best uh, TMR, Super TMRs in the future. But the other thing about these rating systems, and this is a general thing about these ratings in general, in general, in general, is that they are very much based on how we see the game now. For instance, Eileen was actually massively, I think, undervalued when she first came out, even though she did get killers, and it wasn't until some bosses started being more machines and stones that people were like, oh my god, she can actually deal a ton more damage, and she's incredibly useful. And this is one of the problems with games like this, or Hearthstone, or anything where you have new things coming out, and you're already thinking about the game that you're playing. We see that we are thinking we tend to think for what things are currently like now. Like, for instance, this is a great example because Hearthstone has a new expansion coming out. 135 new cards that will be shoved into what the game is now. And a lot of people are thinking, well, take the legendary weapons, these weapon cards that can be removed very easily by other cards in the game. Or, oh, this minion is powerful, but it can be silenced and remove its great effect. But a lot of the times people aren't thinking about the A, what the meta will become. They're thinking about what the meta is like right now. And that's very easy because when you're playing a game right now, you tend to think exactly how it is. And so it's a little frustrating when we're planning and thinking of units values now versus units values later. And that's the kind of thing. 
A unit may look bad right now because it's Thunder Element and we're seeing a lot of trials where Thunder Element is useless, so the unit is bad and people will write it off or give it lower review scores. And people will see that and go, oh, oh, something like Nal or Naru is bad because she's a Thunder unit. And it's like, no, she's just not good at the moment. But in general, I think it's bad for the game. Uh, I think it's in generally bad to have this tier of units. Because yes, there are obviously some better units. As far as I'm concerned, the Holy Explosion family of like Orlando, Eastar, uh, Sephiroth, Dark Veritas is probably the best because it's the easiest to chain. But that's a different reason. It's just you know, reliability, and it's what I value, and yes, I think in some of my unit reviews, I even like to hype up some units, but I tend to like to hype more units more just because, you know, it sucks when you get, uh, when you finally get a rainbow and it cracks and it's something that you don't like. The fact is, is that all of these units are particularly good, and I don't even need to really go on much further about the fact that any 7-star is better than any 6-star, because, quite frankly, <laughs> like, they either have a use of their TMRs being incredibly good, or they have, they can actually do dish out a lot of power, and the most uninteresting thing in Brave Axvius right now is the massive damage show off, which is mostly by whales and unobtainable and unrealistic in most settings of just being incredibly high numbers. And it's cool that you can get those high numbers, but if it's not practical and it's not interesting and most other people can't get it, then it's really just kind of a highlight real thing. What's more interesting are players like Ozak. Now, Ozak didn't even use any uh, five stars in a lot of his units, and he always tried to do it without any super powerful TMRs and just friend units for boots. That is much more encouraging to the game, showing people that, hey, you don't need these crazy setups. You don't need to spend a lot of money to have fun with this game and to beat the trials. That being said, this game does have negative reinforcement. You spend 50 stamina to try on a trial boss, and you fail that trial boss, and you fail it like coming really close. That feels bad, because that 50 stamina is just gone. You can't use it to farm or do anything else, and you have to wait if you don't have stamina potions. And long-term players, this isn't an issue. Like, we have usually saved up quite a bit of resources that it's not a problem. But for but I think in general it's kind of bad for the game of uh, this idea of these units are good, and these units are bad, and here's why, and this number score people just look at and go, oh my god, Noctis is a 95 out of a hundred? Beatrix is way better. Why would I want Noctis? All oh, these Noctises I have are just garbage. And no, that's not true. Noctis does still have a lot of value. As a matter of fact, he could be one of the worst things to happen in Arena because of his new Flask ability at 7 star, which can stop and cause enough multiple status ailments that it will cause a lot of problems for players. Like, you think Amelia is bad, or just regular Noctis is bad. How about a Noctis that can do all the flasks in one turn? That's so much worse. And even things like Ico is a 93. I'm not entirely sure about that because three, two star or, uh, Bahamut comes out and Ico has 150% uh, extra summon damage. Bahamut was a very strong carry in a lot of trials for a while. And Ico getting, that was Ico, that was before Ico, and then Ico came along with this, like, you know, 40, 50, 60 percent we started to see. And that was a big deal. And now we're seeing 150 percent, and she's only a 93. 
Again, it feels more like we are rating these on what is currently available. And I understand the kind of want to do that, but it's also really boring. Uh, and I think it's just bad because it doesn't make us feel good. Now, the other site that I think gives particular, well, at least front page numbers, which is something to really think about, is uh, Famitsu. And when you think about Famitsu as opposed, like, Ultima, I think, is the worst, just because it is user ratings and you can clearly see what they are doing. But Ultima, I think, is a little bit more grounded in reality. Just a little bit, though. For instance, I would mostly agree with the numbers that we are seeing on this page, particularly because looking at walking, he is a bad unit for a lot of reasons. He's an uninteresting unit for a lot of reasons. And see, even I'm saying that. But looking at his kit, his kit isn't the most useful especially with the seven stars out, I see why he has a much lower rating. There isn't much that he can do, and as a 4-6, eh, you kind of expect a little bit more. But these numbers are all variable comparing to what you are actually trying to do in this game, what you like, what you don't like about units, and the point is, is for new players who are coming into the game and wondering, well, I see this rating on this unit, and I see this rating on this unit, and this rating on this unit. Do they actually mean anything? Yes, they do. If they don't, if I said no, they mean nothing, I'd be lying, because they are based somewhat on reality. Altima's may be the worst thing out there for telling whether a unit is actually good or not, just because Altima is this idea of it purely seems to be just user generated. And there are just too many people who are willing to just flame down and say, 10 out of 100. For, for a 7 star, really? Uh, okay. But the system just doesn't generally feel particularly that useful. The other thing is... Uh, Famitsu, and I think Famitsu is a little bit probably the numbers are a little bit more like it. And as far as I remember, the units are not actually rated by users, but something a little bit more official. And it gives a little bit more information as to why each of these units are rated high or low. And again, going back to it for a second after I translate it. It actually gives some reasons as to why this unit was rated so high or so low. And that's rather important because anyone can just turn on to a comment section and say, this sucks. But to actually validate your reasons gives a little more credibility. With that being said, do I think you should put too much value into it? Not really. Any five star is particularly good. Even Delita. Even Delita has his strong points in his 7 star. They're just not as much as a whole bunch of other units. And again, we all live in this fantasy world of just being able to say, well, I got two Orlandus, or I got two Sephiroths, or I have this perfect setup where I don't need anybody else. I don't need friend units. I have all this great stuff. And I think that's a poisonous, toxic attitude to have to push on the game because the fact is is that you can do a lot of these tough trials with just four and six star units and those are far more impressive than any high number damage dealing thing that someone can post on a YouTube highlight reel because it actually takes a lot more skill. Does that mean I'm going to be switching over to just four, and four to six stars? No, no. We like seven stars. And I'm not particularly that great at this game. But uh, when you, next time you're wondering and you want to uh, you want to run over to Altima or Famitsu to see what are the new Japanese units like? What are they rated? 
just think back and remember that take it with a grain of salt. Basically, it can give you a general idea of whether a unit is fantastic uh, or uh, more of a dumpster fire. Or in some cases, don't use Altima. Altima is just not a good resource. Uh, use Famitsu uh, or better yet, just look at the unit stats. Uh, check out some videos on it. There's always somebody posting videos about the units they got because a lot of the times the units they got are special to them. Uh, Lunaras, my two Lunaras are super special to me and I want to make more videos with them because I think they're really cool. I think they're really powerful and no user rating is going to change that. But anyway, thanks for watching and I hope I uh, gave you a little extra perspective but uh, till next time there's going to be some Hearthstone content this week because there's just nothing in Brave XPS right now. Oh my god! Whoa!